the Irish born star of Triple J Radio and original Rovecast member. He's also recognised from his appearances on Spicks and Specs, the Comedy Festival Gala, and the Adventures of the Good News Week. He's currently a regular on The Good Game on the ABC2. He has performed at the Edinburgh Festival and toured Britain, South East Asia, the United States, and Hobart. Don't know if I'd fucking throw that in my CV, but anyhow. <laughs> Would you please make him welcome a very, very funny man, Dave Callan. Thank you. Thanks so much. Well, welcome along. Thanks for uh, having me here. Are we all well? Who's been to this shindig before, sir? Yeah. yeah. Who's here for the first time, sir? Yeah. yeah. Who doesn't know where the hell they are, sir? Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. You made it to round two of the quiz I just made up. Who's having a drink tonight, sir? Yeah. Who's not having a drink tonight, say, yeah? It's never as enthusiastic. Who's still hung over from last night, say, yeah? Yeah, I'm Irish, that's my excuse. So watch out, that wild turkey might go missing a bit later on. I want to clear up some misconceptions about the Irish. The lovely Dara invited me to be here, he's Irish as well, so I'd like to start by addressing a few misconceptions about the Irish that I've heard in this country traveling around Queensland. Number one, we do not say, ah, oh, fiddly dee potatoes. That's racist. Number two, we don't know what the hell Enya is trying to do either. And number three, Irish people are not drunk all the time. Sometimes we're asleep. It's great doing comedy in a country where people are so funny. Did you know you're funny, Aussies? Aussies have, I swear, the best sense of humor in the world. You are funny people. You have Danny Minogue judging whether or not people have talent. <laughs> I see what you did there. And you call ugly women bush pigs. That's quite poetic, isn't it? It's like, not only are you a pig, you're not even good looking enough to be in the city. <laughs> Get out, you big bush pig. You're gonna have to go and live in Burpin, Gary. You've got some great names for places in Queensland. Burpengary is at the top of my list. I also went to a place called uh, Deception Bay. Or did I? <laughs> I went up to uh, Bundaberg. Not as many polar bears as I was expecting. I got carded in Brisbane. I went to Brisbane and I went to the pubs with no ID because I don't usually have to prove my age with a head like this. So I've gone up to the bouncer, I'm like, how are you going? He goes, have you got ID? And I was like, no. And he goes, well, you can't come in. I'm like, how many 17 year olds do you know who look like a wizard? <laughs> I've got a beard and it's going silver. I'm practically Gandalf. <laughs> you shall not pass, was his response. But it's great being here, it's great being in, uh, in Queensland. I went up to Carnes. Do you know Carnes? <laughs> they didn't like the way I pronounced it up there either. I'm like, hello Carnes, how are you Carnes? They're like, it's not Carnes, it's fucking Keynes. <laughs> As in drinking Keynes of piss, mate. That's another thing I had to get used to. Alcohol is called piss here. Nobody else does that, Aussies, you're the only ones. It's not fucking normal. First time I heard, I'm like, what are you lads doing tonight? Oh, drinking piss, what? What sort of place is this? What's wrong with you? Are you on an Ayurvedic health kick? What's, what are you drinking piss for? Fantastically funny people, they're great hecklers. I saw an English comedian get heckled by an Aussie heckler. One of the best things I've seen, it was fantastic. This English comedian came out and he had to go at you guys. You don't do that, he had to go at the crowd. He's like, hey, Aussies, you're weird. You're the only country that eat the animal on their own coat of arms. This English comedian said that. Aussie, Aussie heckler just goes, yeah, hard to do that back where you're from in England. Pretty hard to eat a unicorn. <laughs> it is hard, you have to catch them first. Not the best, do you wanna hear the best heckle I've ever heard, yeah? So that was an Aussie hackle. Here's an Irish one. This happened at Anti-Poverty Week in Ireland. They had a rally for anti-poverty, yeah? That's what I love about this story. Best hackle ever, wasn't even a comedy show, yeah? So uh, Bono made a speech from U2. Bono gets up 
to make a speech and he doesn't say anything. And that's rule number one of making a speech. You have to say stuff. Bono doesn't, he gets up and starts clapping into the mic, he's like this. What the hell is Bono, he just, he's just clapping. Eventually he goes, every time I do this, a child in Africa dies. Some guy up the front says, well stop fucking doing it then. <laughs> One to beat, isn't it? One to beat. Yeah. So we're the only country allowed to be racist right to our face, Irish people. And we have to laugh along with the racism. And keep in mind, Aussies and, and Irish people get along very well. We have a shared sense of humor, a shared disrespect for authority, and a shared cultural hero in Ned Kelly. How good was he? Ned, Ned Kelly. Cross between a leprechaun and Iron Man. You can't beat that. Fought back against police corruption as well by strapping a plow to himself. What a great cultural hero. Anyway, so I've been out here for a while now, and uh, when I first came out, there was no internet. So couldn't really look up this country. Came out in 1990. No internet back then, but we did have home and away. Not very useful. You guys say rack off a lot less than I thought you would. You flaming mongrels. And we had Aussie music in the 80s as well. Aussie music in the 80s didn't really help. It was a bit confusing, wasn't it? You're the voice, try and understand it. Make a noise and make it clear. Whoa, a whoa, a whoa, whoa. Yep, try and understand it is right. We're all someone's daughter, we're all someone's son. Thanks for that, John. Not only the voice, you're the fucking brain as well. <laughs> TNT, it's dynamite. Yeah, we know. We've seen the Roadrunner, we know what TNT is. Out on, uh, how do we sleep while our beds are burning? I don't think you do. I think it would be a very troubled night's sleep at best. That's the way it's got to be, little darling. We'll go riding on the horses, yeah, yeah. What's a horse's yeah, yeah? <laughs> Way up in the sky, little darling. What was Daryl doing? Fucking a Pegasus? <laughs> Very confusing songs in the 80s. <laughs> Out on the patio, we sit. And the humidity, we breathe. Yeah, good on you. We watch the lightning crack over cane fields and laugh and say that this is Australia. When do you do that? When do you see lightning go, ha 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 ha, this is Australia. <laughs> Never seen anybody do that. So I asked a friend of mine who was around in this country in the 80s. I said, made all that stuff they sang about in Aussie lyrics in the 80s. Did any of that stuff actually happen in real life? But he just smiled and gave me a Vegemite sandwich. <laughs> Lyrics aren't that much better nowadays, are they? Have you heard the radio nowadays? What the hell are they going on about? I can't feel my face. Have you heard this? <laughs> Have you heard this stuff? <laughs> Doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Lyrics, if you haven't heard it, lyrics go, I can't feel my face when I'm with you, but I love it. Yeah. Hashtag cocaine's a hell of a drug. <laughs> and have you seen what qualifies as dancing nowadays? Is that good? Who, who enjoyed that? One man over there, good. Who, who did a little bit of vomit in their mouth? Yeah, slightly more people, yeah. What's that dance move called, anyone? Yes, twerk is correct, yeah. Miley Cyrus and Nicki Minaj, people like that made twerk a household word a few years ago. It was underground before they came along. Before they came along, twerk is where Irish people went from Monday to Friday. That was a good one. <laughs> Have you seen Miley Cyrus's behavior, the carry-on that passes for entertainment these days in the video hits? Swinging around on giant balls, licking a hammer in her underpants. When did this become entertainment? Good people of Queensland. And how come, <laughs> how come when she does it, it's considered artistic and creative? I lick hammers in my underpants. I'm wasted and have to leave Bunnings immediately. 
Double standards, I don't like them. How come when the Hulk has a blackout, smashes everything, punches everyone, wakes up in his neighbor's backyard with no shirt on and torn trousers, he's incredible. I do the exact same shit, I'm an alcoholic. I don't really like drinking anymore. I don't, I actually, the drinking is great. The drinking's fine. I'm not too into the hangovers. The hangovers are the worst, aren't they? You wake up, the questions begin. Who am I? What languages, if any, do I speak? Whose baby is that? <laughs> so anyway, that's my word of warning. Public service announcement about hangovers. How's the food here tonight? Can we give it up for the wait staff doing a great job, yeah? Brilliant Tucker, some of the best Tucker you'll get at an event like this in the nation. I swear to God, they, they pay great attention to the food. Fantastic feed today. Much better than a lot of the pubs nowadays. You'll notice a lot of pubs are getting all gentrified, aren't they? They're getting all fancy. The first thing to change is the food menu. Now, they don't change the food. They just change the way to describe it to try and charge us three times as much. Have you seen it going on everywhere, every capital city? In the olden days, it was straightforward, wasn't it? Chips and mayo, that'd be one. Chips and mayo. Now, you never get that anymore. Now it goes on for about f a few sentences. It's rustic, farm-cut, chunky, bakehouse fries with garlic and herb aioli and sea salt. Like we don't know where the fucking salt comes from. <laughs> That's the thing, these adjectives make no sense. They don't tell you any extra information. Oven roasted vegetables, have you seen that? Where else are you going to roast the vegetables? Get a fucking volcano out the back, do you, champ? <laughs> Grain-fed beef. I don't need to know what my dinner had for dinner. <laughs> Smashed avocado. Well, sober it the fuck up. <laughs> activated almond. What the hell is an activated almond? Are these almonds activated? No, sorry. We deactivated these this morning. You got here too late. <laughs> hand cut fries. Who's cutting fries with their hand? Using life like a normal person. <laughs> well, you got Bruce Lee back there in the kitchen with a potato. Wah! Pulled pork. Who's pulling the pork? <laughs> back there in the kitchen and then touching my dinner. <laughs> Don't be at that, you dirty bugger, you. Finish your shift and go home like a normal person. Pulled pork, oh well, at least the pig died happy. <laughs> By the way, this is as flash as I get. I never, I never put on a tie or tie my hair back at these things. I find I just look like a bikey on his way back from a court case. <laughs> and if I dress too casually, people think I'm a bum, yeah? In the capital cities. I have to be because of a head like this. People see me coming, they instantly go into got no change mode. Like, nope, I've got no change. However, if I go full out, formal, bow tie, tuxedo, I look ridiculous. I look like Chewbacca auditioning for James Bond. <laughs> so I'm on a sliding scale between that. Yeah, so it's great to be here. I'm gonna wrap up shortly, but uh, I thought I'd tell you a few stories before I go. Um, you've been lovely today, by the way. You've been having a good, good afternoon. Yeah. How good were Sonique earlier on? Weren't they brilliant? Fanta fantastic musicianship there. And there we got a good man over there as well. Yeah, how are you going? You enjoy? <laughs> You're sinking a few there from the bucket, the bucket of Dutch courage there in front of you. <laughs> um, all right, so I want to tell you a few stories before I go. First story uh, is set in uh, Scotland. Has anyone been over there? Yeah. Isn't it a great place? I love Scotland. I like it because all their heroes are hairy, all of them. Braveheart, Billy Connolly, groundskeeper Willie. I could live in Scotland if it had a roof over the top for the rain and subtitles for what people are saying. Anyway, I was out there in Scotland and uh, I met a guy who's a technician. Now, technicians work very hard on sound and lights. They're the first people to arrive at the venue, the last people to be leaving. First people to be blamed, last to be thanked. There's some great people working up the top here and on my right. Can we give it up for the sound and lights folks here working the tech desk? and work in the front of house and side of stage there. So I was working in Edinburgh and I met a technician like these good people here. And uh, so I said to them, look, uh, 
what were some of the bigger gigs you've done? And this guy went, oh, I worked on Beyonce. I did her, um, I did her concert when she came to Glastonbury. And I said, oh, that's great. Tell me, what was that like? And he goes, it was brilliant. I'll tell you a story. And I'm going to tell you guys word for word what happened. Beyonce finished playing. Glastonbury came off stage, couldn't find her phone anywhere. She's looking for her mobile phone. Can't find it. She's going, I think someone's stolen it. And the tour manager's trying to calm her down. He's like, it's all right, Beyonce, just tell us the number. And we can call your phone, you can find it that way. Beyonce went, I can't, I put it on silent. Tour manager hesitates for a split second and goes, well, if you liked it, then you should have put a ring on us. Here's another story for you. I want to tell you this. This is my favorite thing about this country. Like I said at the start, you're very funny people, very honest people as well. Very honest. You just call it like it is in this country. It's been that way since the beginning. You call it like it is. You get a shop over here called the Reject Shop. There's another one in Victoria called Not Quite Right. Any other country, they would try and dress that up. Here, if you're selling people shit, you tell them before they get in the door. I'm surprised you don't have a shop called Fucked As. <laughs> Welcome to Fucked As, mate, it's all fucked. You can have it for fuck all, it's fucking shit ass. <laughs> I'll get on to my favorite thing about this country in a second, but it's so great to be here. It's great to be on dry land. I just came off a cruise ship. No, I don't know if anybody's been on one of them, but I swear to God, people who do cruise ships who go on them. Fantastic guests, but I swear, they switched their brains off. As soon as they got on the boat, they asked the stupidest questions. Here's some questions that get asked on a cruise ship, the people who work there that I was talking to. They get asked this, is there an elevator that goes from the front of the boat to the back? <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure that's Willy Wonka's chocolate factory. They get asked this, does the boat run on its own power supply? <laughs> no, there's an extension cable. <laughs> Going back to the fucking opera house. That's why we can only go so far and we have to turn back again. They get asked this, do the people who work on the boat live on the boat? <laughs> no, there's a fleet of submarines falling behind and we all swim down at the end of the night. This is my favorite one they get asked. They get asked this, they get pictures taken, yeah, everywhere they go on their little holiday and at the end of the holiday, they try and sell them pictures. So they put them all up on the wall. They get asked this, how will we know which photographs are ours? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Maybe look for the ones with the fucking idiots in them. <laughs> you don't have to be on a cruise ship to hear stupid things nowadays, do you? Have you ever heard this? That's just how I roll. When people are talking about their behavior, that's how I roll. <laughs> Next time one says that to you, you go, oh really? That's just how I fuck up my shoulder. Um, I wouldn't know him from a bar of soap. That's another one. How do you not know the difference between a bar of soap and a person? That's a fairly basic thing we all learnt in kindy. See over there, that's my mate Barry and a bar of Dove. One of them's a really good pool partner. The other one, you rub all over your body in the shower. Don't fuck it up. She had an arse that just won't quit. You ever heard that? What the hell does that mean? Imagine if your arse quit. What happened to your arse? It handed in its notice. It got sick of being a shit kicker. It's gone off to pursue a career in politics with all the other arseholes. <laughs> and you love taking the piss out of Kiwis here, don't you? Oh, I've noticed that. Oh, God, yeah. Now, Kiwis are lovely people, I have to say. They're fantastic people, and they've been through a hard time. What with the orcs and everything? They're lucky they had them little fellas to throw the magic ring into the volcano. I saw that documentary. I have to say, the first time I heard the New Zealand accent in Queensland, I have to be honest, I didn't know it was a different accent, because I heard it in this country. I thought it was an Aussie accent with a speech impediment. I'm like, what sort of speech impediment switches your vowels around on you? That's a new one. Like, you could be chatted up by a Kiwi, you'd have no idea. Yes, I was checking the steps on my foot butt, and I saw you walk past duck smuffs, and I thought, shot, that is one sexy butch. 
what? I've no idea what you said. Let's start again. I'd like to buy a vowel, please. Or how about we go with the ones we already have and you put them back in the right fucking order. Those vowels, I can be a little but seeped of. Have you ever had a New Zealander try to borrow a pen? Have you had that? They call it a pin, which is a completely different article altogether. But it's very confusing if you have both on your desk at work at the same time. Can I borrow a pin? There you go. No, a pin. That is a pin. No, a pin you're right with. You're right with a pin. You so with a pin. Use the right flippin' syllable. Otherwise, borrowing shut is going to take for Eva, you duck heed. <laughs> I eventually went to New Zealand. Still couldn't get used to the accent. I was in a, a restaurant and I wanted to get the Wi Fi password. Said to the waitress, What's the Wi Fi password? She goes, It's hippie days. I'm going, What? What the hell did you just say? Do you mean like, I'm Jimi Hendrix, I'm in a hippie days? Or do you mean like, Wednesday, Friday, hippie days? What are you saying? Everyone in the world puts the vowels in the right place, so we know what we're all talking about across borders. On New Zealand goes, Nah, fuck it, we're going to put them on shuffle. Don't put the vowels on shuffle, we need them where they are. Saves awkward moments, yeah? I had a male friend from New Zealand doing some remodeling on his property, telling me how excited he was about getting his rear dicking at the weekend. I was like, you know what, I respect your lifestyle. You don't need to put it all up in my face like that. Apparently the guy was gonna come sometime between 12 and three. I don't even know what that means. The South African accent's a weird one as well, isn't it? That's a weird one, it is, surely. I would like some ass cream. Sorry, what? I would like some ass cream. There you go, rub that on the infected area twice a day. No, I want to eat it, you're fucking weird. Can't come here eating ass cream. I want to tell you about a time I got uh, chatted up by a very drunk woman. Uh, in Queensland, in Burpin, Gary, um, this woman came up to me, she was very, very drunk. One of these drunk people, all their friends have abandoned them, and they're just cut loose into the world to annoy other people they don't know. Comes up to me, doesn't care that I'm in a conversation, starts pulling on my sleeve, he's like, excuse me, excuse me, are you the paddle pop lion? How drunk do you have to be? Not you look like the Paddle Pop Lion, fucking are you the Paddle Pop Lion? <laughs> yes, I am. It's time to play Lick a Prize. <laughs> All right, so I'll tell you my favorite thing about this country. It is the Aussie drunken call and response. Now, you may not know what I'm talking about from the description, but you will know them each individually. I've categorized them, the Aussie drunken call and response into three categories. We got beginners, we got intermediate, and we got advanced. So I'm gonna call them out and let's see who gets them. Is anyone from overseas, by the way, apart from Dara, anyone else? Kenny, where are you from, sir? Oh, you are Aussie, are you? Okay, and over there we got a hand up. Where are you from, sir? Tasmania. I said overseas, not overseas, there's only one. All right, that's all right. We're all from Australia, that's okay. That's all right. We're going to try and make this interactive. Get someone from another country to do this. Let's do it together. Aussie drunken call and responses. Number one. Let's do this one. Very simple, very easy one to begin with. I'm sure everyone's got it. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. That's too good. Let's skip intermediate. You all got that. Let's skip intermediate. Go straight to advanced. This is going to find out who's had more than two drinks in the room, yeah? Basically, anyone who's had more than two drinks is impossible not to call out the response to this one. Here we go. Am I ever gonna see your face again? That is amazing. Do you know the first time I heard that, I was like, what the hell just happened? Did you, did you rehearse this shit? How did you, how did you all know to do that at the same time? Because it's not in the original song, is it? Somebody just went, that song's not fucking Aussie enough. Put some bloody expletives in there for fuck's sake. I love it. And by the way, um, you can't stop yourself. If, if you uh, have had, had more than two standard drinks, you have to call it out. It'd be a great way for the police in this country to breathalyze people. Don't you think? 
They wouldn't need any fancy equipment, would they? Just knock on the window of the car. Good evening, sir. Am I ever going to see your face again? No way, get fuck, fuck off. Step out of the car, please, sir. You're going home in the back of a divvy van. That's the intermediate one. Yep. And 42 African kids just died. That's on your conscience. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been such a great pleasure. Go the Southport Sharks, and thank you so much for having me. Enjoy the rest of your evening. You deserve it. Good night. Great stuff, Davey. Thanks. Well done, mate. Put it up there for Dave Cowan. Fantastic.